Get ready for eleven African rulers who slayed dragons, built empires that glittered like gold, and led armies that shook the earth. From warrior goddesses like Queen Nandi of the Zulus, to brilliant minds like Queen Hatshepsut of Egypt, these ladies rewrote history with brains, bravery, and serious bling. This is more than just a history lesson. We're talking elephants, pyramids, and power moves that'll leave you speechless. Join us on a wild ride through time to discover the legacies of these remarkable women who ruled like nobody's business. Hatshepsut, whose name signifies foremost of noble women, defied convention as a female pharaoh in ancient Egypt, reigning from 1473 to 1458 BC. Her rule was characterized by relative peace, marked by a notable building program that included the construction of a magnificent temple in Luxor. Additionally, she orchestrated a successful sea expedition to the distant land of Pont, situated along the northeast coast of Africa, in present-day Eritrea and Ethiopia. The unprecedented aspect of Hatshepsut's reign lay not only in her gender, but also in her assertion of pharaonic authority, rather than being recognized solely as a remarkable woman. Despite being the wife of a male king, she initially served as a regent for three years before ascending to the role of pharaoh under circumstances shrouded in mystery. Embracing her newfound position, she adopted a complete throne name and statues were crafted portraying her with male tributes, even featuring a beard. Tragically, following her death in 1457 BC, Hatshepsut's monuments faced desecration. Her statues were toppled and scattered, her temple vandalized, and her image and titles defaced. Despite a dignified burial in the Valley of the Kings, Hatshepsut's memory endured neglect as her achievements were not duly honored in the aftermath of her passing. In 1828, Ranavalona I made history as Africa's first crowned queen, ascending to rule the kingdom of Madagascar for an impressive 33 years. Following the death of her husband and second cousin, Radama I, she strategically positioned herself as queen and implemented a policy of isolationism and self-sufficiency. Notably, Ranavalona I, I severed economic and political ties with European powers, successfully repelling a French attack on Foul Point. In 1832, the Queen controversially banned Christianity among the Malagasy population, prompting the departure of nearly all foreigners within a year. Her death on August 16, 1861, marked the end of her reign, commemorated by the slaughter of 12,000 Zebu, with their meat distributed to the populace, and a nine-month mourning period. Despite historical portrayals of her as a harsh ruler, modern perspectives recognize Rana Valona I as a shrewd politician who safeguarded Madagascar's political and cultural sovereignty amidst the challenges of European encroachment. In the annals of the Kanu Chronicles, Queen Amina's origins trace back to the year 1533, a time when her mother, Queen Bakwa Turunku, held sway over the city of Zaria then recognized as Zazao. Zaria, now a prominent metropolis in contemporary Kaduna State, northern Nigeria, witnessed the affluence of Amina's family, amassed through the thriving trade in imported commodities such as metals, cola, cloth, salt, and horses. Blessed with abundant resources, Amina honed her martial prowess alongside the warriors of the Zazao cavalry in her youth. Her exceptional skills and noble lineage propelled her to ascend as the leader of the Zazao cavalry, garnering immense wealth and numerous military accolades. By the time Amina ascended to the Zazao throne, she had evolved into a formidable warrior, earning the admiration and respect of the kingdom's military. Importantly, the prevailing ethos of Amina's era defied gender stereotypes, as men did not perceive a threat when women assumed ruling positions. Among the Hausa people, there existed a prevailing belief that individuals, regardless of gender, could wield authority, and women, including Amina,
could oust ineffective male leaders. During Amina's reign as queen, Zazao occupied a pivotal position at the crossroads of three major trade routes in northern Africa, linking the Sahara to the internal markets of the southern forest lands. The fall of Shanghai and the ensuing competition for control over trade routes fueled prolonged conflicts among the Hausa people and their neighbors in the 15th and 16th centuries. Amid this power struggle, Zaria, under Amina's leadership, briefly attained dominance. A mere few months into her reign, Amina spearheaded her inaugural military campaign, and for the ensuing 34 years, she led continuous military endeavors, expanding her kingdom to unprecedented heights. Commanding an army of 20,000 men, the Hausa Queen sought to annex several neighboring cities, extending her rule up to Nupe and conquering Kanu and Katsina. Amina's expansive rule ushered in an era of prosperity for Zazao, bringing unheard of wealth to the kingdom, enriching her realm with gold, slaves and agricultural bounty. She also introduced advanced weaponry such as metal armor, including iron helmets and chainmail, to her cavalry. To safeguard Zazao, Amina erected formidable fortifications around the conquered cities, many of which still endure to this day, standing as a testament to her enduring legacy. Queen Edia, the mother of Esigi, the Oba of Benin, reigning from 1504 to 1550 in present-day southern Nigeria, played a pivotal and multifaceted role in the kingdom's history. Revered as a formidable warrior, Idia demonstrated unwavering dedication before and during her son's tenure as the Oba of the Edo people. Upon Oba Ozolua's passing, a power struggle ensued between his sons Esigi and Ahwaran for the throne. Esigi, controlling Benin City, and Ahwaran based in the significant city of Udo, approximately 30 kilometers away, led to a decisive conflict. Mobilizing an army at Unwame on the river Ose, Idia orchestrated a triumphant victory over Ahwaran, securing Esigi's ascent as the 16th king of the Benin kingdom. Following this, neighboring Igala warriors crossed the Benu River, attempting to seize Benin's northern territories. Esigi, guided by Edia's political acumen, successfully repelled the invasion, restoring unity and military prowess to the kingdom. Edia's integral role in these victories, combining political counsel and medicinal expertise, earned her widespread acclaim. In recognition of her contributions, Esigi conferred upon Idia the prestigious titles of Iobateto and designated a palace for her, formalizing her status as the first queen mother of Benin. Candace served as the title bestowed upon Ethiopian queens or empresses by Europeans, symbolizing their divine connections as consorts of gods or living deities. The legacy of Candace from 332 BC endures, although historical knowledge about these queens remains limited. Amanirenus, recognized for her strategic acumen and a lost eye incurred in a battle with Romans, exemplified fierce, tactical, and unifying leadership. According to the Alexander Romans legend, in 332 BC, when King Alexander the Great sought to conquer her land, Amanirenus orchestrated a conflict between Roman and Ethiopian forces. Positioned on a war elephant, she adeptly maneuvered her armies compelling Alexander to withdraw from Nubia and redirect towards Egypt. This account, originating from an unknown Alexander Romans writer, lacks historical corroboration from Alexander's era, rendering the entire narrative of Alexander and Candace's encounter with the Romans a mysterious and likely legendary tale, commonly quoted but absent historical references. Queen Yagoje of Zamfara reigning from 1310 to 1350 in present-day northwest Nigeria, expanded and moved the kingdom's capital from Dusi to the more strategically defensible Kuyambana. As the first daughter of Daka, the fifth king of Zamfara, she not only served as queen but also headed the Buri court, a pre-Islamic mode of worship in Hausaland. During her rule, female chiefs were appointed for the first time in the kingdom, and Queen Yagoje surrounded herself with such influential women. Remarkably, her reign was marked by peace and prosperity, 
lasting for a prosperous 40 years. Nefertiti, meaning a beautiful woman has come, reigned as Egypt's queen and consort to Pharaoh Akhenaten, 1353-1336 BCE. Together, they initiated a religious and artistic revolution, establishing the Aten cult and fostering a distinctive Egyptian artistic style. Nefertiti's iconic visage has become one of Egypt's enduring symbols, emblematic of her unparalleled influence as the ruler of the Nile and a perceived divine offspring. Married to Akhenaten in 1357 BC, Nefertiti ascended to the position of queen, playing a pivotal role in the fourth year of Akhenaten's reign, when the sun god Aten supplanted all others as the national deity. Despite the closure of older temples, Nefertiti seamlessly transitioned her prominent role from the old religious order to the new, serving as a priestess of Aten alongside her husband. By the twelfth year of Akhenaten's reign, Nefertiti's power reached unprecedented heights, with evidence suggesting she may have been elevated to the status of co-regent, holding equal standing with the pharaoh. Depictions on temple walls underscored her significance, portraying her in the same size as Akhenaten, emphasizing her importance and depicting her alone in worship of a ten. Despite her prominence, Nefertiti mysteriously vanished from historical records after twelve years. The circumstances surrounding her disappearance remain an enigma, fueling ongoing speculation and scholarly debate, adding an intriguing layer to the legacy of this powerful queen. Ya Asantewa, a prominent figure in the Ashanti Confederacy of present-day Ghana, initially worked as a skilled farmer before ascending to the esteemed position of Queen Mother during the 1880s. Her selection for this role was influenced by the matrilineal customs of the Ashanti people and her elder brother, Nana Akwasi Afrane Okbase, a powerful ruler at the time, appointed her to this significant position. As the Queen Mother, Asantewa undertook various responsibilities, notably serving as the guardian of the revered Golden Stool. Given the Queen Mother's pivotal role as the chief advisor to the king and the second highest position within the empire, she played a crucial part in safeguarding the Golden Stool. In 1896, tensions rose as the Ashanti resisted British encroachment in Jorland and the attempted conquest of the Kingdom of Ghana. The Ashanti were compelled to establish the Gold Coast colony in 1897. In response, the British captured and exiled Ashantene Prempe Wam, the Ashanti king, and Kofitene, Asantewa's influential grandson and ruler. With the British seeking to acquire the Golden Stool, Asantewa valiantly stood against them. Amidst deliberations among remaining community leaders on how to counter the British threat, Asantewa emerged as a steadfast leader. Rallying troops, she assumed the role of Commander-in-Chief of the Ashanti Army, marking the beginning of the Ya Asantewa War of Independence or the War of the Golden Stool in 1900. In a bold proclamation, Asantewa inspired the community leaders by asserting that if the men of the kingdom failed to defend the people, the women would rise to the challenge. Her actions, including leading a rebellion, defied traditional gender roles and transformed her into a symbol of strength and resistance. Regrettably, she was captured during the rebellion and subsequently exiled to Seychelles, where she passed away in 1921. Ya Asantewa is remembered as the last woman to lead a major rebellion against European colonialists, leaving an indelible mark on the history of the Ashanti people and their struggle for independence. Nandi was a daughter of a chief of the Langani tribe and the mother of the famous Shaka, king of the Zulus. In 1787, Nandi's son Shaka was born out of wedlock, and she suffered great humiliation and rejection. Undeterred by mockery, Nandi's resilience shone as she instilled noble values in her son, molding him into an exceptional African leader. Drawing strength from her lineage which connected her to the Zulu king, Nandi consistently reminded Shaka of his destined greatness. Upon Shaka's kingship, Nandi wielded significant influence, particularly in military and governance matters, during his campaigns. Renowned for advocating moderation and discipline, she guided Shaka away from excessive violence, shaping the kingdom's growth over a remarkable 12-year period. King Shaka's esteem for women, 
rooted in Nandi's influence, underscored his understanding of their power and resilience. Nandi's legacy extends beyond motherhood. Her strength and determination left an indelible mark. In 1827, her passing evoked profound mourning from Shaka and the Zulu people. Documenting the achievements of Queen Poku, an Ashanti ruler of the Ball people in the first half of the 18th century, poses challenges due to the reliance on oral history. In recent years, scholars have skillfully blended African oral tradition with written European accounts to provide a more comprehensive understanding of Poku's life. Born between 1700 and 1720 into the still intact Ashanti kingdom, Poku entered the world of royalty as the daughter of Nyaku Kosiamua, either a sister or niece of the powerful Osei Tutu. The Ashanti throne's matrilineal succession system emphasized the mother's identity, rendering Poku's father's identity unrecorded. Vital to succession, Poku, as the royal heir, played a crucial role in the power-sharing dynamic with her son when a new male heir ascended to the throne after Osei Tutu's death in 1718. Upon Dakon's ascent to power, Poko, despite her privileged rank, faced the disappointment of being unable to conceive, a critical factor for producing the next heir. During Dakon's nearly two-decade reign, an ambush and his subsequent death led to a hostile occupation of the Ashanti capital, Kumasi. Through her strategic planning, Poko safeguarded her life and organized the escape of the townspeople, making her the sole surviving royal princess. Facing potential death, but instead taken hostage, Poku's fate prompted Dakon to appoint Tanu, a warrior, to lead the forces in rescuing her. Following the successful rescue, Poku married Tanu, leading to the birth of a son and securing an heir to the Ashanti throne. Subsequently, Poku made a monumental decision to leave Kumasi and establish a new kingdom. Inviting Ashanti families seeking to depart, they embarked on a challenging westward journey. The trek involved navigating jungles with panthers, giant ants, and giant snakes, crossing savannas with aggressive elephants, and contending with illnesses that plagued their every step. After months of arduous travel, they reached the Komyo River. Faced with an impassable torrent, Poku and her followers believed a sacrifice was necessary to appease the river spirits. Initially considering sacrificing a sick woman and her baby, Poku ultimately made the heartbreaking decision to offer her only child to the river. This tragic event marked the Ashanti's migration, known as the Baole, commemorating Poku's son. In the year 960 BC, the ancient land now recognized as Ethiopia played a pivotal role in a historical narrative. At the heart of this tale stood a queen, often identified in some texts as Makeda, though she is more widely acknowledged as the Queen of Sheba. Legend holds that Makeda, an enigmatic and regal figure, was the beloved companion of King Solomon of Judea. According to the Old Testament of the Holy Bible, this unnamed queen from the land of Sheba embarked on a journey upon hearing of King Solomon's renowned wisdom in Israel. Laden with gifts comprising spices, gold, precious stones, and exquisite wood, she sought to test the limits of Solomon's knowledge with challenging inquiries. Impressed by Solomon's wisdom and opulence, the queen bestowed a blessing upon his deity. The biblical account depicts her as a chaste and unnamed queen who returned to her homeland after the encounter. Makeda, a princess of considerable wealth, carried an impressive offering of 4.5 tons of gold, symbolizing her formidable power and affluence. Notably, Makeda, a striking and influential black woman, embraced Judaism out of love. According to historical reports, Makeda and Solomon shared a son named Menelik I, destined to become Ethiopia's first emperor, establishing the enduring Solomonic dynasty. Which African queen captivates your interest the most? Are there other queens from Africa whose stories you'd like to share with us? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't hesitate to like and share with your friends. Would you like to know more about powerful African kings? Stay tuned for our upcoming videos.